Hi everyone, it is Dr. Brianna Tyvee with Thrive Chiropractic and I'm here with this week's installment of our nutrition series. And today I'm here to talk about caffeine. And I wanna start by saying that caffeine in and of itself um, is not necessarily a bad thing, um, but it's when we consume way too much of it at a time that it becomes problematic. So I wanna first of all say that I'm being very clear in using the word reduce and not entirely eliminate um, because people tend to get a little touchy when we talk about taking caffeine out of their diet. So um, just to be clear, we're talking about, you know, monitoring our amount and being more moderate in our consumption. So um, like I said, caffeine on its own, not a problem, but when we consume it in huge quantities, there are a couple problematic issues with it. The first is that it is a stimulant. So it's going to raise that blood pressure in our body and for you know one or two cups in the morning this is not a problem but if you're throwing down a pot in the morning and running out for a vente mid-afternoon that's a pretty consistent stimulant in the body that's going to keep that blood pressure raised and obviously none of us are looking at having um, additional raised blood pressure in our life the other thing is that there is a stress response that happens in the body and a lot of us are experiencing um, a lot of additional stress right now but that stress response is not launched in the body until the body perceives something as a threat. And when you are over caffeinated, it increases your body's perception of stress. So things that may not cause you to react or um, trigger the stress response when you're not consuming caffeine may actually be triggered if you're over caffeinated. So that's definitely something that we want to work at reducing since we're all in a pretty steady stress response as it is right now. Caffeine typically comes from two different sources. We're looking at either coffee or soda. When it comes to coffee, again, a little bit, you know, beginning of the day, maybe midday is fine. But where it can become problematic is when we start adding a lot of additional sugar to it as well. So um, obviously watch the amount that you're consuming, but also what you're putting into it. And then on the soda front, the first thing that I'll say is if there's one thing that you could do to change your health trajectory, cutting soda would really be one of the uh, greatest things that you could do. However, even if you're a person who's just you know consuming multiple cans a day if you could just cut that down that would have a huge effect on your health as well um, if you're drinking soda I'd rather have you drink the real thing because we know what's in it the chemicals that are in diet soda were basically unrecognizable to the body until about 30 years ago so we don't even know what the long-term effects are but we also do know that people that drink diet soda have a tendency to gain more weight than those who drink regular soda so if you're gonna drink it drink the real thing but also be aware that if you're drinking regular soda it's about the equivalent of taking 12 teaspoons of sugar and putting it into a bowl and going ahead and eating it like that. So um, reducing or eliminating your soda intake is going to have a huge effect on your health all the way around. So takeaways for today, caffeine a little bit at a time, not a problem, cup or two in the morning, okay. But if you're somebody who is really putting it down all day long, just starting to cut back, you know, by half maybe to start with and really pare down is going to have a great effect on your stress response, your blood pressure, and your overall, overall well-being. So hope that helps for this week. We'll see you again next week. Be well, everyone.